Hey everyone, uh, this is Ryan again. I am going to do another video on uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse um, 14. And uh, I'm, I'll read it, but uh, just a, a kind of a preemptive thing, statement. This is, there's too much here to do in one, so I'll do the first part today. I don't know where I'll get, but after I get done emptying my brain out, I'll look over it at what I submit and try to fill in the gaps next time with um, all the stuff that's missing because there's so much here in this verse. Uh, I'll just start out by saying the verse. Um, I don't have it written down here. It's well, on one of these pages, but I should have it memorized. It says, if my people who are called by my name would uh, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I would then hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And uh, I think it's just proper to do some background information to what has led up to this verse. Uh, Solomon had just uh, finished the temple of, that he built, and it was just this most elaborate temple of gold and all kinds of uh, it seems like it was kind of liberace would out, if, in my opinion. <laughs> and so um, he did all these sacrifices, and basically he was consecrating the temple because uh, he wanted God to uh, be his uh, place that he dwelled amongst the people. So he did all this work trying to get this temple ready and, uh, and sacrifices, and it's like a long celebration and then uh, later on, the night after he did everything that he sought in his heart to do uh, for the temple, he then uh, gets a visit from, it says, the Lord in the verse. And, uh, and then uh, we, he says, if anything should happen to the people or pestilence or, or um, like uh, locusts coming or grasshoppers or whatever, that um, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways and he and he was and he's talking about in that place in that temple uh if they do that if they if the people will come to that temple in that place and do those things that he will heal the land forgive their sins and heal the land and uh and so it's and that's kind of the uh it's referring to the temple and so that's kind of the basis of where this uh, comes from and so but there's much that we can learn from it in the new testament on this side of the cross and so to get started uh first who is talking i think it's very uh important to say to figure out who's talking we know it's not an angel because it specifically says the lord uh came and then, uh, and so what you have is uh, someone who is, uh, has God-like status, not as above the angels, that is speaking. But then within the verse, it says, then I will hear from heaven. And so it's, what it seems to be is a pre-incarnate Jesus who is coming and addressing Solomon right here in this verse. Um it's someone who is Lord, who uh, says, my people called by my name. And that kind of gives us our transition over to this side of the cross is through that statement. Uh, but then um, just to elaborate on it, like just who is Jesus? Who is the person of Jesus in the grand scheme of things? And we get a, 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 one of our many uh representations of Jesus in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 through 20 which I have right here it says he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created both in the heavens uh, and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones dominions or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him he is before all things, and in him all things are held together. And this is talking about Jesus. He is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, 
so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And so I would present this speaking in Quran uh, in Second Chronicles seven fourteen as uh, the pre incarnate Christ that we have speaking here, and now uh, let's get to uh, this whole um, image of God thing, and so it says, uh, "If my people who are called by my name," and so. This is uh, the people called by his name is in the New Testament is Christians. We are followers of Christ. And then in Israel, uh, the people who follow God were followers of Christ because he was uh, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. All things were created through him and for him. And so uh, when you when he's presented in the and when God is presented in the Old Testament many many times uh, you can uh, conclude that that is Jesus speaking because everything was created through him and he is the image of the invisible God so when it comes down that is who we're talking to and so then uh, that puts him like was the person who says who was dwelling in the temple would be a pre-incarnate Jesus who would come down and meet with them and uh, is the high, high priest. Uh, so we have the human representation of a high priest who is supposed to represent uh, Christ in the Old Testament, but then goes to the temple to uh, get atonement uh, through the Holy of Holies, which then God says, I will dwell in this place. Uh, and so now we have this image of God, uh, the of uh, uh, us bearing image God. In, in Genesis, we were made in the image of God. And so this is very significant. There was something that to that us, how we were made, that was lost in the fall of man. And through Christ, we were able to uh, get that back. But in that time period of from then until now, we had this temple that uh, made it so that God can be in the midst of them. And so it was consecrated. It was a place that was made holy, which means separated out like from the world. And they, they really regarded this place as holy so that it would be worthy of God to dwell there. And they had to go through all these different steps in order to even be in the presence of this place called the Holy of Holies, which is was set where God would dwell amongst the people of Israel. Well, on the cross, there was the veil. The first thing that happened uh, when Jesus died was there is this veil that was in the temple that uh, was where uh, God were, was to dwell was ripped. So this divider thing was ripped. And uh, that's a symbolism of what is now the temple of God. And uh, we as Christians know that with that happening, that we are now the temple of God. And so God dwells within us. And so this verse, which is speaking on the temple of God, is very relevant to each individual believer and the church as a corporate. And so then we get to, if my people, which are who have the name of Jesus, and that's the name that uh, because of Jesus, what he did, the sacrifice and his obedience to God, it says that he was bestowed a name. God bestowed upon him the name that was above all names that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow that is in heaven, on earth and below the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. And so then uh, in, when Jesus gave the, the, the commission, he says, uh, uh, in Matthew 28, he says, all authority has been given to me. Go therefore and then make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you and I will be with you until the end of this age, even until the end of this age. And so 
Jesus has all authority by the sacrifice that he did for us on the cross and taking our place and becoming our sin. He then gained all the authority that we originally had before the fall. He got it back for us. And so uh, we can bear his name if we simply identify ourselves as his followers and say that what he did we basically get the benefit from because he paid the price, not because of anything that we did. And so then we are able, if we identify as the body of Christ, as Christians, we are able to operate in his authority. And next time I'll talk about um, why God is a God of order and what does that mean of God to be in order and so we being lined up, which then has more to do with this verse. But it says, if my people who are called by my name, that's us, would humble themselves, uh, that's taking a lowly position. And so uh, you can either be God-centered or self-centered. The person who's self-centered elevates himself. The person who is God-centered humbles themselves and realizes that uh, without God, they can do nothing. Uh, and that kind of goes with that, the, a bunch of different verses, but John 15 uh five comes to mind first is I am the vine, you are the branches. If he abides, abides in me and I in them, they will bear much fruit. But apart from me, they can do nothing. So that person understands that concept and humbles themselves to God. And, uh, and then when they come to the throne and seeking my face, oh, that's huge. That's so much there. Um, the image of God. Uh, when we uh, I have a verse here. What is it? Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, And have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. And so there's this, uh, when we come into a uh, presence of perfection, uh, there is, we, it, it molds us. It's not uh, just a, a condemning thing, but it's a conviction thing. Because when you see perfection, it highlights dirt. When you see cleanliness, uh, like something that's perfect and pristine, and you put something dirty, in, it just gives more light to that dirt. Now, God's not condemning and all the, doing all this different stuff, but it is convicting, and it convicts our heart. And so um, when you're in the image of God, it naturally uh, will uh, bring you into wanting to uh, Go towards that which is like the the template man or the template person or the being the perfection. There should be a natural thing within people that uh, if they see something done the right way, it it it's unnatural to be like, well, that's perfect right over there. But I'm going to go over here and keep doing the thing that I do that I know is not right anymore. Uh, the person who follows Christ is molded by that image. They see the perfection in it. And there's like, I want that. I don't want lesser now that I've seen the, the true thing, that I've seen truth. And so uh, when you are in the image of God, if you're seeking his face, if you are seeking his righteousness uh, and hunger and thirst for his righteousness, uh, you will be uh, satisfied in that because in just uh, uh, being in his presence, uh, you are going to be conform. You will be uh, re your mind will be renewed, his, uh, uh, and you will start doing and acting like his perfect will. His perfect will will be manifested in you. Will come to life in you just by being in his presence, and he knows that. So he says, "If you seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways." And that whole thing, it's not a, a, a sin conscious thing. If you are in the presence of your Lord and you actually see him as Lord and you see perfection and you're convi and that convicts you of the things where you are not lining up with him, you, will nat you should naturally want to turn away from things that are not based in him or not of him. And so the person who does not turn from their wicked ways is a rebellious person. And that it would be a person who is uh, sinful because if a sin is simply uh, things that aren't 
uh, miss the mark of lining up with the will of God. So if you see perfection and you know God's will, and yet you do you keep doing what you're doing, that means you are not turning from your wicked ways and you're not submitting or being humble to God. So they they are one in they all this stuff that's before kind of is occurs naturally from being in the presence and seeking God and him coming to them. Uh, it should change from conviction and not condemnation. And so um, seek his face and just being in the presence of God will transform the believer into being like God uh, just naturally. It will, your mind will transform from that. And so uh, next time we'll get into order in the rest of the verse, but we just got through the first part of the verse because there's so much here that can be uh, uh, talked about. So if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, I would then hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. Thank you. Ooh, 16 minutes.